CataractCoach.com, resident posterior polar cataract. Remember, the risk of capsule rupture is high due to the posterior polar cataract. Anonymous resident operating here, and you can see that's a classic posterior polar. Look at that demarcation between the opacity centrally and the area right next to it. There's no fluffing out or feathering of it. Definitely not a posterior subcapsular cataract. It's posterior polar. Patients tend to be on the younger side. Now, if you see a 16-year-old patient with a posterior polar cataract, it doesn't necessarily need surgery. You got to keep that in mind. Usually the patients want surgery somewhere around age 40 or 50 where they've had the posterior polar their whole life, but now it's becoming more opaque and it's spreading larger. And so in a case like this, do remember that at the site of the posterior polar opacity, that posterior capsule can be weak, fragile, even frankly absent. Studies published by Abhi Vasavada and Bobby Osher show us that about a third of these patients can experience a capsule rupture at the time of surgery. Now, this younger patient, that tripan blue dye does help to stiffen up the lens capsule. And you know, it's a great red reflex. You don't really need the tripan for that reason, but it does stiffen the lens capsule. So judging by that nuclear density, maybe the patient is late 40s, or early 50s. So a couple of little grooves there. Notice no hydrodissection. Now you can do a hydrodelineation, and I tend to do hydrodelineation for these cases, but you can also just do neither. The posterior polar cataract can cause a rupture of the posterior capsule with hydrodissection, so be very cautious about that. So now, groove was made there here centrally and then coming out of the eye, and now let's see, now maybe there's the hydrodelineation. Now that's gonna be a helpful thing. It's gonna help separate that endonucleus from the epinuclear shell. So again, the goal at this point is get that endonucleus out of the eye, leave the epinuclear shell and cortex behind, and those can then be brought out. I like to do a viscodissection technique to get out that uh, epinuclear shell as well as lens cortex. But let's see what's gonna happen here. So a little more viscoelastic now in the anterior chamber, and probably going over the phaco probe again, here we go, and trying to get these pieces out. And so vacuuming those up, really not a lot of ultrasonic energy needed here. These are pretty soft. So that endonucleus comes out. You can see there's that epinuclear shell. Now, if you can get the whole shell out of the bag like this, that works fine. But an easier technique is using a dispersive viscoelastic to do some viscodissection. So you want viscoelastic to go between the capsule and that cortex and epinuclear shell. So that viscoelastic, the dispersive, as it goes around, it can protect and help dissect, plus it's slow motion. Plus, if there is a break, it'll go tamponade the break for you, right? So remember, a lot of times in these cases, you can have an open posterior capsule through no surgeon fault at all. This is the nature of these eyes. And sometimes, there's a video of me even, I do a posterior polar, and it's happened once in the last many years, but as soon as that last plaque comes off the posterior capsule, there's a hole right in the middle of it. And that can be managed pretty well. So now switching over to the IA probe, I like that idea. Nice and controlled here. And just trying to get everything up nice and easy. Now because the nucleus is gone, it's you know obviously no risk of dropping the nucleus. It's already been removed from the eye. So even if there is a break here, notice how the whole sheet of, of the epinuclear shell is coming out together at once. That looks great. Nicely cleaned up. Now importantly, if there's some stuff stuck or adhered to the posterior capsule, do not touch it. Leave it alone. And here, watch this too. Also, inject your viscoelastic to fill the bag before coming out with the phaco probe. Do not come out of the eye and let the posterior capsule come forward and the AC collapse. So here comes the lens, which is gonna, like a single piece going in the capsule bag. You can also put a three-piece lens in the bag. And therefore, if you do have a break in the capsule as you are inserting the lens, then you've got other options for placement, right? When the lens is already in the eye, if it's a three-piece, you can opt to capture it, haptics in the sulcus, et cetera, et cetera. So now cleaning up here, the viscoelastic. In a case like this, I'd be very cautious, even a little hesitant of going behind the posterior capsule because you want to just get out of town now. You want to, your surgery is over, your lens is in the bag, the posterior capsule is intact, Let's leave well enough alone. Let's get out of this eye. Again, not letting the anterior chamber collapse. So BSS in the second hand, inject, and keep coming out of the eye quickly, and then quickly seal up and hydrate those incisions. In fact, next time I would hydrate the main incision prior to putting the eye probe in the eye to remove viscoelastic. Here at the end, get a nice good seal there, 
And that looks like a great case of beautifully done, young doctor. I appreciate that. And thanks for understanding we do keep all resident cases anonymous. I know you wanted your name mentioned, but trust me, it's better anonymous when you're a resident.